G'day folks, welcome to this end of day report. It is the end of the 10th of June, 1944. This is of course the full campaign playthrough of Atlantic Wall. And well, there's been a really big breakthrough. I'll, I'll start over on the left here. A uh, big breakthrough by the 6th Airborne out to the, effectively the east of Khan. Uh, rotate this around to show you sort of from the German perspective what's been happening. They've basically been chipping away for some time. Um, series of attacks here and there. And on the, the third turn, the PM turn of this 10th of June, a series of three attacks resulted in the complete elimination of two German battalions. They didn't even get a chance to retreat. Um, one of them caused, I think, two losses and they were eliminated in the retreat. Another one caused three step losses and then, yeah, a big advance. So, yeah, 6th Airborne has pushed through. They're now being supported by what, what, what it basically done as a result of this. The 3rd Infantry Division has crossed back over and are supporting them because this is kind of where the action's happening. And the 4th Armoured Division, you can see these elements here, have also come around as well and are, are supporting in, um, in this push. Now you can see the response, the German response has been to rapidly bring the 12th Panzer Division back out here um, to try and block this. They're in a lot of trouble. Uh, what remains of the 711th Division is kind of in this little area here. Not much with those sort of the, the elimination of those battalions. Uh, first SS Panzer Corps units are arriving, but there's not much they can do. Just some artillery, HQ. Um, uh, yeah. Trouble, basically. In fact, I just remembered I forgot to one, two, three, four, five, six. I forgot to move these guys over here. Um, so they're also pegging away. This is the 3rd Canadian Infantry Division making their way into Caen on the, the northern edge of town. You can see they've got one, two, three, four, five, with the help of the. Oh, these are 3rd Division there. They're split up a bit. I didn't realize that was 3rd Division out here. Um, these guys need to pull back around to keep the division together. Uh, this should be 51st Division area. We've got a 50 Division Battalion here. So these battalions do find their way out of place. Uh, 50th Division should start around about here. Well, they don't want to be in the front line. Um, yep, yeah, they start here and they shift to the left. Um, you'll notice this sort of scattering of mainly companies behind the line, a couple of AT positions. Um, they can be sent in where needed, basically. That's that's what they're doing there. Um, bringing the artillery now. This is 3rd Division Artillery making their way around uh, to support this attack. Um, so a lot of a lot of activity out here. They even attacked at night term, which is during the night term, which is why they're disrupted. Um, and yeah, another hugely successful attack. So that, that night attack... I think also resulted in the elimination of a 711 Division uh, battalion. So yeah, the Germans are rushing to kind of they've brought these these are they've kind of come over from the Orne River defences to block this gap, but um, they're in trouble basically. As we've got basically two six airborne third infantry division pushing through this area against the sort of Germans rushing to form a line. During this day, we also had 50 div attack along the line. Every unit along here uh, tried to poke some holes through, well, they were trying to really push them back. And there was this mass failure, this, this entire assault failed. They, I think, sorry, I lie. I think they had one success out here on the right, but everything else, not just a failure, but demoralization of all these units. So they were out of action for the entire day. Um, that those yeah it was from here onwards they attacked then i th thought i'd follow up with an attack maybe out here that also failed so no shift in the german lines out here we then i've brought the seventh armored around they were trying to look for an attack going on here nothing happening first division is pretty quiet we've now got the 29th consolidated around this area second division moved into here and then we have reinforcements in the morning from the 2nd Armoured Division. And they can move very rapidly from Omaha along these primary roads out to here. And they were preparing to attack. And then the Germans get their reinforcements. And they've brought up the 265th Division. And I'll talk about this in a moment. 
um, and they've got their headquarters here. So this, the, they didn't get a chance to attack. They're thinking maybe because they're quite mobile and these guys are quite slow, maybe they'll use these you know, effect interior lines of communication to rapidly shift out elsewhere. They can reach here basically in one movement turn along the primary road down to here and then along the secondary they can reach about this point here so maybe on the 11th of june they'll do that and then attack in the midday turn the germans are going to struggle to respond they could also in effect come out here as well and help the 82nd um they're pro the germans are probably more vulnerable out here so maybe that's a better way to go about it or uh i mean there's also the possibility that they can, they can sort of pull back around and come back down through here or through here. My main concern here was you've got the 17th Panzer Grenadier Division and they are far more mobile. Around here, it's been pretty quiet. Both sides have just been holding their lines. Uh, you can see those out of communication markers. I'll get to that in a moment, explain why it's the case. 82nd tried to attack here. Some small successes, but also some failures. You can see disordered. Some more units were demoralized, have now recovered, but very little ground. Uh, being gained by these attacks. So this and this is just static out here where the fourth division is. So while this is all happening, uh, there are a lot of reinforcements coming on without headquarters. So you've got the two hundred seventy fifth here with no HQ. You've got the seventh army troop all over the place. Um, you've got here the yeah, seventh army troop all over the place, as I said. Um, the allies have got the 4th Armoured Division, and they don't have a headquarters. These guys out here. Now, how does that work for supply? Well, <laughs> units need to draw supply from their headquarters. If they can't draw supply from their headquarters, so let's say the 4th Army Armoured Division headquarters, they can still draw supply from another friendly HQ but in that case, they're out of communication. So all of these uh, 4th Armoured Division troops, these guys, for example, are in effect out of communication. That only matters if they are mechanised units and they move. So in effect, they're actually out of supply, technically or if they engage in combat. When, yeah, so when they do one of those things, if they're mechanized movements in their units and they move or they engage in combat, they shift from out of communication to out of supply. <laughs> this is where it gets tricky. Supply is checked at the start of every turn. So at the start of the German turn, this is checked and it's a bit complex, but basically they can't go straight back to out of communication. I think they have to spend a turn out of supply and then they can return to out of communication. It's an extremely weird and convoluted supply process for these units without HQs. Units with HQs are easy. If they can draw supply, they're fine. But these units basically can never draw supply to their friendly HQ and they can't revert back to out of communication. So my, sort of, my, my attempt to interpret this is basically, okay, they can move, but then they're out of supply and they can't go straight back to out of communication. They have to stay out of supply for that turn and do nothing basically, or, or, or yeah, rest, I think. And on the following turn, they can return to out of communication where they get their full movement and full strength. So it's, I, I, I get the impression, this is not really clarify, clarifying the rules, I get the impression that this is a way of saying they're limited basically in what they can do. You can do, they can do one thing, they can either engage in combat or move once every two turns. They're only small formations, but they're pretty important. These are big um, armoured units. Uh, there's some... Mechanized infantry making their way through around as well. I don't know where they are. They're somewhere around here, maybe. Yep, that's where they are. Um, so they're also sort of out of supply. 
so yeah, it's a, I'm wrapping my head around this 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 issue of non HQ supply to non HQ units and how that actually works out. I know they're out of communication because they can draw supply. I know if they do anything, they become out of supply. But the rules are very vague on precisely how they get out of supply. Um, is the idea that they serve as a reserve and a backup just in emergencies and once they're out of supply, they're out of supply permanently? I think that's a bit unusual. Surely they can draw some supply. So I think, yeah, I think that's the idea. I think I'm impl implementing like that. So they are, in any case, being brought around to help out. 3rd Infantry Division, there's a lot of, um, I'm bringing a lot of the armoured companies out here. You can see the Sherman's M5 uh, and so forth um, because this this is where that armour superiority really pays off. It is not halved in this clear terrain. Armour counts at full strength, um, and so it's most effective. You only need, for example, you know, four of these Sherman companies against this stack here to get three to one superiority in a three column shift, even against this 12th Panzer um, division formation. Uh, four Sherman companies, these little Sherman companies like you can see here, uh, or here, there's a lot in this area. Will give me yeah three to one three three shifts basically based on what it is, uh, and they're proving very successful out in this open terrain, uh, which is why the Germans are wherever possible trying to defend in the sort of very sparse woods out here. So anyway, folks, as I said, that is the end of the 10th of June. About to head into the 11th of June. A lot happening out here, but pretty much very quiet elsewhere along the line. Stay tuned and I'll report back soon on how things go in these attacks around Cannes.